All right, in this episode, we are going to talk about uh, strokes, fills, and the eyedropper tool. Let's go ahead and clean up this a little bit from the last thing. I'm gonna exit out of that because uh, it stays right here. Oh, by the way, any of these uh, tool icons that have this little arrow in the bottom corner, if you click and hold on those, it will uh, open up more options for that. Just a handy little thing. Anyways, the stroke and fill. So I'm gonna select this uh, little outline of this little dude I made. So I can change the stroke and the fill color by going down here and double clicking and I can select any color I would like, click OK or over in the swatches panel, um, I can select the fill, change it to what other, whatever color I want. Um, I could grab these Pantone solid colors and change it to whatever. If I go back to the swatches and click on the stroke, that activates it. So when you select a color for that, um, if I go back to uh, the Pantone colors, um, I can select a darker version um, to have as the border or the stroke rather. So uh, changing colors, that's pretty standard. If I go up to the stroke options, uh, you can do some cool stuff. You can change the cap and corner and alignment of the stroke. Uh, so if I select the pin tool, I'm just gonna click two anchor points holding shift uh, so you can see what I mean. Let's go ahead and bump up the stroke size so you can really see this. So these anchor points, uh, you can change how those anchor points end uh, by changing the corners and the caps. Uh, for example, I can change it to a round cap, which rounds off the edges of each anchor point. Um, the corner, let me make a corner real quick. There we go. So we have this corner right here. If I go up here, I can change it to uh, a round join, which rounds it off, um, or a uh, bevel join, which uh, cuts off the top part. I can do a uh, projecting cap on those. All of mine, I usually do a round corner and a round join because I think it's uh, super clean looking. It gives it a more like bubbly feel. Another thing you can do is go down here and uh, select uh, different endpoints uh, to your stroke. So for example, it gives you options to do like an arrow. Whoa, <laughs> let me uh, change the weight of this stroke so you can actually see what's happening. Okay, let's go down. You can select an arrow. Uh, there's a bunch of different options uh, you can choose from. Uh, there's even these little weird little hand ones if you wanna use that. Um, I don't use these too often, but they have come in handy, um, especially when doing like web design stuff, doing arrows from one point to another. And then you can change the end point of the other one as well. You can pick whichever you'd like. So I'm gonna hit none on those. Whoops, let's go ahead, click none. The profile of your stroke, you have the option to change. So there's a bunch of different uh, width profiles you can choose from. Whoops, I accidentally clicked out of that. Or you can even uh, apply, go up to the brushes and apply different um, strokes to this as well. So there's quite a bit you can do with that. So one last thing you can do with these is you can make the stroke dashed, which is pretty cool. So I have that uh, rectangle selected. You can change the dash width. Um, you can also add the gap width, which is cool. There's a lot you can do to get exactly what you want. So for example, if you just want like a simple dashed, uh, let's bring this down so it's like that. Beautiful, and I believe the uh, caps and uh, corners and stuff apply to this as well. So you can get some cool look using that. One last thing I forgot to mention is the alignment of the stroke. So you have the option to align it on the outside, uh, the inside, and the middle. So if you choose the middle, the stroke will obviously uh, be from the middle. If you do the inside, it will be on the inside of the stroke and the outside, the outside, obviously. But it gives you a little bit more flexibility as how you uh, wanna lay out your strokes and stuff. One thing that I do quite often and that comes in handy is sometimes you want to uh, play with the strokes and the fill separately, but you want them to stay in the same place. So for example, this little guy, say I have like a five pixel stroke like that, I can hit K and what that does is uh, it brings up the paint bucket tool. 
Um, if you click in here, you have the option to expand up in the toolbar. So if you click that and you click out of those, now you can see uh, these are separated, the stroke and the fill. If you grab them with the selection tool, they're still one shape. But if you grab them with the direct select tool, you can now um, manipulate them individually, which is super handy. The reason being is you could uh, Command C and Command F, and you could, uh, for example, create a shadow shape. So I could make this one slightly darker to uh, add some shadows, which is super handy. That's how I do all of the lighting and shadows when I'm creating illustrations like this. So again, to do that, you create a shape um, that has a stroke and a fill, something like this. Um, if I bump up the fill so you can see it, uh, you can hit K and then click in there uh, to make it a live paint group and then click expand. And then that makes it so you can manipulate the colors um, and the shapes individually. But they are still grouped together, which is pretty cool. So again, I can hit like command, select that inside shape, command C, command F to paste it in front. I could grab these two anchor points and then select a darker color and uh, that's how you can easily create lights and shadows. And then the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is the eyedropper tool. So if you have a shape selected and you hit I, you can select anything on your canvas to choose from. Uh, so for example, like if I want this shape to match this, I can just go and click on that. If I want to get it to have the same stroke and fill, it will apply those automatically. So it will apply both the stroke and the fill together. That is something you need to remember. Another thing you can do with the eyedropper tool selected is if you have one thing selected that you want to apply to others, you hold option and you can click on whatever shapes you want to apply that same um, fill to, which is pretty cool. Let me undo all that. So let me show you again. If this one's brown, I can hit the eyedropper and hold option and apply it to all of these shapes, which is pretty, pretty handy. So again, to recap, uh, you can access colors down here in the toolbar, select any color, uh, change the hue of it, or you can actually get exactly what RGB or CMYK or HSB colors, or values rather, that you want. You do have the option to select web only colors if you're working on illustration that's gonna live on the web. And then you can choose from your swatches panels as well. Your stroke options uh, gives you a lot of flexibility into what you can do. And then the eyedropper tool is how you can quickly apply the same stroke and fill styles to other shapes. So yeah, that's all for this video. In the next one, we're gonna talk about the pen tool.